Let's be honest, nobody wants to be the first person at the party, so why would you trade zero open interest options? You're just begging for huge spreads, and then there's gonna be no volume in there. All right, so we wanna go to the option party that's already popping. What's good, fam? It's your other brother, Adam Gibbacks. And today we're gonna be looking at the total options open interest by expiration. So last week we checked out total volume by expiration. Now we're gonna get the total open interest. So you can do a volume to open interest ratio. That'll help you look for abnormal, high, unusual options volume. All right, so check it out. We're gonna take the code from last week. We're just gonna to add to it. Okay, so obviously we gotta change the title. And then we're gonna come here, we wanna add a list that we're gonna add each expiration cycles of uh, total open interest. All right, that was easy. Next, we wanna come down here and we wanna create our data type. So there's just gonna be some dashes for strike prices that don't have open interest data. So we're gonna to wanna to create that, make that a NAN so that we can add it all together. It's gonna to add as a zero when we do the sum operation. All right, moving on. Next thing we wanna do is get the sum of the open interest. So we're gonna change the variable name and then just change the column titles and then that's gonna add up all the open interest for us. All right, next what we wanna do is we wanna save our, our added open interest values into a list and then we're gonna add a print statement that for every expiration cycle just lets us know that we made it through the expiration cycle so we can track the progress of our app as it's running. All right, that all looks good. Next, we're gonna add to our data frame the list and then we're gonna add a column title for it. All right, now before we go forward, we actually wanna check this against Yahoo Finance, make sure our data looks good. And then there's something we need to see about how our data pulls down. That's gonna be super helpful for later. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the strike price, volume, and open interest data for the first expiration. We're gonna compare it to Yahoo. All right, wonderful. So here's our call option data. We got our front month here, and it looks like everything's matching matching up so let's just quickly take a look at the put option data now notice that there's 32 33 entries here so 33 strikes on the call data and there's only 31 entries on the put side so everything looks like it's matching here but it's just omitting a couple of strike prices so as you can see here this 29.5 and then this 31 strike are missing from our data here so something to be aware of uh, when you're conducting your analysis all right let's just go ahead and run this and see what happens all right that looked successful we got all of our expirations there and then we have our total volume column and our total open interest so it'd be pretty easy to do a vector division to get your total volume to open interest ratio so you can see if there's any unusual options activity um, high volume relative to open interest so a lot of contracts get moved around and it looks like this 48 day this january third uh, the third the normal expiration the third Friday there is the highest open interest here. Um, so interesting. Now you could of course just throw this into another for loop for all the tickers that you want to get this data from. Then you'd have total volume uh, to open interest ratio for all the tickers that are in that list. So fun stuff there guys. All right, you have my permission. Go ahead and go get some bags and we'll see you in the field.